It is my privilege today to welcome to the show California mom and attorney Erin Friday, who is a leader of the parent advocacy group, Our Duty. They work to really support parents who are facing the issue of gender identity with their children. Erin, thank you for the work that you're doing and for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me. So let's start with your family's story. I know you all have journeyed through this. That's what brought you into this advocacy space of talking about the issue of transgenderism. What happened in your own daughter's life that she started to get interested or became introduced to the idea of being transgender? Well, it really started for my daughter in seventh grade when she went to her comprehensive sex ed class uh, at her public school. And unbeknownst to me, a third party comes in and teaches these kids for five hours, so an hour each day. And um, one hour was dedicated to gender identity Hmm. with the gender bread man and um, all of the kind of pictorials of you could uh, have a female body and a male brain. And so the seed was planted um, after that class And in fact, all of her friends, there were five, sat in my front yard saying what their new labels were. And none of them chose, you know, the boring cis, which is a made-up term in and of itself. But they all picked something on the alphabet because it's not cool to be, you know, a boring white girl. Um, That's how I took it. And I was you know, alarmed by the language that they were using, including pansexual, which is not, you know, a term that 11-year-olds should know. And in fact, I didn't know what it meant, and I had to look it up. Um, So that was kind of the first entry point for what happened to her. So that sounds pretty immediate. I mean, she she has this class in school, and then it was right away that she and all of her friends were sort of saying, hey, uh, we don't want this the label of female anymore we're going to pick new labels yes but i didn't i didn't know how important that moment was okay later i did because i went to the parenting class Mm because i thought well well, what are they learning at school Mm -hmm. um and what gobsmacked me also was you know i was a volunteer at this school i knew all the teachers by name um i got the volunteer award you know (laughs) um so i was in the classroom all the time and so i was really confused why these teachers who i considered friends would be teaching this nonsense and that's when i learned that a third party comes in and then i went to that third party's class and that's when my eyes really opened up to the lies um, that they're teaching our kids at school. In in that class, they um, talked about uh, males being G.I. Joe and females being Barbie, and that there's a spectrum in between. And of course, my hand shot up and said, well, then are we all trans? Because there is no such thing as a Barbie and and G.I. Joe. Um, They gave out a page with all these different uh, gender identities, Demi Boy. I mean, most of them just, they they just didn't make any sense. And of course, my hand keeps shooting up saying, like, this doesn't make any sense. Don't we teach our children just to be? Why are we putting them in boxes? Why are we labeling them? Why are we introducing sexual language? Um, And I was pretty much told to uh, be quiet. And, you know, what also confused me is I was the only parent kind of questioning them. Hmm. And, um, and of course, that worried me terribly is is what is happening. Fast forward a a year later, my daughter moved from, you know, one label, which, you know, she started with pansexual, which is a nonsense label when you're 11, because you're not sexual at all. And so then she moved from that, she moved to lesbian, and then she, over the pandemic, landed on trans. Okay. And how long did she identify as trans, and, and what did that look like? She identified uh, as trans for about a year and a half, at least from what we knew, mm-hmm. uh, because she was doing things in secret, of course. Um she had secret social uh, media accounts. You know, we we thought we were smart parents. 
we thought we were on it. Um, you know, the kids are just more technologically advanced. And um, so she had fake, you know, like shadow accounts um, where she had a trans identity. And uh, but over the pandemic is when we really learned it because her public school uh, changed her name to a male name and used male pronouns with, without, of course, involving us. This school never met my daughter because it was the pandemic and she never stood stood you know in their doors or in a classroom. Mm-hmm. And um, so we pulled her from that school because I thought what it what an overreach. Yeah. Um, you know, and the school used you know the term safe. We need to be a safe space. Well, she's in my home. So yeah. by extension, I must be unsafe. And what do you know of me? Mm-hmm. Name one thing about me. Um, of course, they couldn't. Um, you know, and that's when the house of cards started to just fall. And I need to just back up a little bit before yeah. she actually, you know, came out with with the new name and whatnot. Um, her mental health had plummeted severely. Uh, depression, um, getting very dark. Mm-hmm. Um, mean. Mm-hmm. Like this child was a a sweet kid, and she just didn't want to come to family dinners. Um, decorated her room in in kind of goth emo, um, dark. Yeah. You know, almost. Um, you know, a little like I don't know, demonic mm-hmm. uh, things. And she, her whole personality changed. She mm-hmm. was. Just she wasn't the child that I knew yeah. anymore. And was she or were you all as a family talking to counselors, psychologists, doctors? Was there any kind of, of that input coming in? Well, there was. I mean, we, we of course, uh, quickly engaged a psychologist. Again, you know, I was clueless um, that we should have vetted her. We should have understood whether she's an affirming psychologist or not. Um, she, of course, was an affirming uh, psychologist, as they all, pretty much all are in California. Yeah. Uh, she quickly told us that we needed to call her by the male name and male pronoun, or she would commit suicide. Uh, she told she you know cited a, a, a study that said 41% chance of kids committing suicide. She didn't read the study. Um, I'm I know that because I queried her about the study after I read it, and it was clear she's just taking a, a headline and you know regurgitating it. Um, I found out that she is she used Diane Aaron Saff um, as her mentor in transgender kids using her terms. And, and who is Diane, if you would? So Diane Aaron Saff is a psychologist at uh, UCSF. Mm-hmm. Um, her claim to fame is that she believed in the satanic panic, which, of course, was debunked. And she believes in the transgender child and says things as moronic as when a child is unbuttoning their onesie to turn it into like a dress, that is gender communicating. Mm. Um, another insipid statement of hers is that if a little girl rips barrettes out of her hair She is gender communicating. So in my mind, she's a quack. I mean, the the absurdity, anybody who's had children understands that children will rip off their mittens. And what does that mean? (laughs) You know, that they identify as an iguana? I I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's just nonsensical. Um, And this psychologist also told me that my memory of my child was false. When I talked about how uh, girly my daughter was, um, like actually contrary to me because I'm not girly and she was really girly and into Barbies and, and American Girl doll and Little Ponies and all of that. And she said, well, she was hiding her true gender identity. I mean, that's just so absurd. Sign her up for a Mensa because you think my two-year-old was planning on outing herself when she was, you know, 14 or 13 and she had been planning this? Like, that's amazing. Um, so it, it just, 
it reinforced that that there's no science behind this, that yeah. this is all smoke and mirrors and it's made up. And um, and so, of course, we fi- you know, fired the psychologist. Yeah. How were you doing at that point as a mom? What what was running through your head? Um, I, well, I was not doing well. Of course yeah. I wasn't doing well. I was terrified. And you question how you were as a parent. What did I do to create this? What did I miss? Mm -hmm. Um, You, of course, you know, kick yourself for giving the phone, uh, for not checking enough, for not being smart enough to see that there was, you know, shadow uh, social media. Um, You know, there was another thing that I did, and, like, I I don't know how I feel about it now, but there were friends of hers that I knew were – damaged children and they were the influences on my daughter but I felt as a parent that I'm a parent to all kids Mm -hmm. and I didn't want to um, like the sins of the parents should not be placed on the children Mm -hmm. so I let my daughter have relationships with these kids and they influenced her you know to concretize her gender identity um, more so, and again, I don't know how I feel about that because I don't think I, I feel sorry for these kids yeah, too. Of course, um, but in hindsight, I, I should have, you know, barred them. Yeah, yeah. So what what was your daughter's full journey, and what made her ultimately desist and come to a place where she said, "No, I'm I'm not transgender." So that's a long. I mean, these are long. It's long going in, it's long going out, and I don't know exactly, and I probably never will, what the recipe was, Mm. because I threw everything at it. At at one point, um, you know, you're kind of counseled to keep having this relationship with your child, and that's the most important thing. And I took a kind of a different tact with that, not that I wasn't loving towards her, but I decided that I was going to set boundaries and I was going to hold the line on those boundaries and they were not going to be crossed. I took the phone, so that was key. And a lot of parents will say they can't do that. You can and you must if you want to get your child out of this and your child will hate you and you have to be strong enough. Your love for your child has to be strong enough to take their vitriol. And it's very, very hard. I spent many a nights crying myself to sleep. Mm. Um, Some days I didn't get out of bed. But you still have to do it because now there's not a day that doesn't go by that my daughter doesn't say that she loves me. Mm. So you can take the hate because you know what the end is going to be. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, And even if my daughter didn't come back to have a relationship with me, which I knew she would. But even if she didn't, I I saved her from being a lifelong medical patient. So I would do it again. So I took the phone. We dropped the friends. We moved to a private school, which wasn't as helpful as I thought it would be. But, you know, just getting her away from Mm -hmm. um, the people who thought that she was transgender, which is really, it's a really important part of the parenting piece is you have to give your kid an out because they're going to be embarrassed. Yeah. And you need to pull them from the people who kind of concretized that uh, gender identity. Mm -hmm. And you need to be the fall person. So I was the fall person. She wasn't allowed to get her phone back until she went by her real name again. That way she can point and say, my mom's the jerk. Mm -hmm. I have to be called by my female name now. Yeah. So we did that. Um, we sent her to some uh, overnight camps, which I don't think you can do anymore um, because they're all captured. But we made her, um, you know, they were give back camps. They were, uh, you need to help um, save the reefs. Mm-hmm. And so she's weeding. She's working hard. She's tired. She doesn't have time to ruminate mm-hmm. at night because she's been working all day. And she's also learning how powerful her female body is. Yeah. So that, I think, was really important. Um, 
and and then I hit this stuff straight on. I started to protest, and I, you know, I had all my protest signs around the house. I made it very clear. I do not believe in this. Yeah, your your mother, who you used to respect and who you used to think was intelligent, doesn't believe in this. Mm-hmm. And I am not an you know an activist by by trade. I, I you know, and I'm like, but your mom's doing this crazy thing. Yeah, you know, she's going out there with signs and. Um, you know, and then I had books all over my house. Abigail Schreier's book was in every room. You couldn't miss it. Um, Aaron Brewer's book was in every room. Maria Keffler's. Like, I made it very clear. Mm-hmm. You know, I had boxes of, of them. Yeah. yeah. That we don't, we don't believe in this. Yeah. And I think that was um, an important thing. And, and then we did some, um, you know, I did some, dr- um, I call them drive-bys. Because uh, I would make her listen to cult podcasts with me. And so we'd be on a long drive and we'd listen to the Moonies and we'd listen to this cult and the Val and whatever. And then after a couple of them, I would say, you know, some people think transgenderism is a cult. Mm -hmm. And I'd walk away. Yeah. And let her think about it. Think about it. Um, so I did think I did a lot of things like that, kind of coming around it in a different way. Um, when the Johnson and Johnson vaccine came out and wasn't good for females, I said, "Well, is it good for you?" Mm-hmm. And then I would leave. Mm-hmm. Not wait, you know. It, you don't want to have the battle. Mm-hmm. You just kind of want to leave little drops, um, asking the questions. Yeah, and I, you know, she was in the car. She was a captive audience. I played. Um, a podcast with Helena, the, a detransitioner, and my daughter's story was very similar to Helena's in that my daughter was into anime, got into cosplay, shipping, like, you know, the parallels were there. And so I, you know, we were on a long car ride. She was forced to at least hear it in the background. And I know that she listened to it because, um, when I started to play the second half, she's, she said, oh, we already heard this part. <laughs> um, so it was just kind of start, start to unravel it f- for her yeah, um, in, in, and make it come from her. Mm-hmm. And how old is she now? Uh, she's 16. Okay. And how is, how is your relationship with her now? It's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Like I said, That's she's beautiful. Yeah. And because of your work with Our Duty, I know that you have spoken to so many parents who've walked in these same shoes. How common is your story, is your daughter's story? I mean, are, are there common threads and themes that you're seeing as you're hearing other, other family stories? All of our stories are similar. All I need to know is, is your child male or female? And the age of the child, and I could probably fill in you know, the facts about your child. And that, to that, to me, that's insane. Like, why can't the medical community do the same? Because our stories are all the same. Mm -hmm. You know, the kid that was bullied um, into anime, uh, you know, same-sex attracted is another one that's in there. Watched a lot of porn. Porn's a huge component, especially for the boys. Um, For the, you know, autism. I mean, we know all these factors. And... um, you know, so it's pretty clear. It, it's clear to those of us in the parent space what the markers are for a child who's going to get caught up in this. Okay. Wow. And through the work of our duty, um, you have done a lot of advocacy work in your home state of California. Um, you've testified in California. You've spoken with leaders, with legislatures. Share a little bit about the update of what is happening in California right now. What rights do parents have? Because California has been consistently kind of one of the central leaders on this issue. And a lot of people say, you know, so goes California. Eventually, so goes America on this issue. So what is the latest in your state? Well, you are absolutely correct in that whatever happens in California is going to spread. Uh, We are the beginning and the end of this. Uh, So California is absolutely insane. Um, I don't know how else to say it. Um, 
we continue to pass bills without even <laughs> out even the Republicans saying much on it, hmm. uh, which is shameful. And that's coming from me, a Democrat. <laughs> um, but we just keep passing bill after bill after bill, uh, taking away parental rights and um, pushing the gender agenda. And I can see now how each one of the bills that pass, how they are used as stepping stones for the next bills. So soon, I mean, right now, the, the first bill that I testified against was um, an insurance bill that requires insurance carriers to keep secrets from parents who pay for the insurance, um, that if their child, um, and, and this is over 18, um, I still call them children, anybody under 25, uh, but if they are on their parents' insurance policy and they get a double mastectomy, well, the parents pay for it and they have no idea that their insurance is paying for it. Um, and they have no way of knowing that it even occurred. Mm -hmm. So again, it's this breakup of, of like parents are nefarious. We are evil and we are bad. And that's how they come out of the gate on everything. Um, we have been called terrorists. A mom testifying is called a terrorist. We, we testified at a, or we spoke at a school board meeting, and, and the vitriol after that was, and we're all Democrats, by the way. We're all Democrats up at the microphone, getting told that we're right-wing bigots, homophobes. I mean, we can bring a, a, a lesbian up at the microphone, and they will still call us that. So it's just name-calling. Um, but California just continuously gets worse. Uh, but in 2023, um, our duty has decided that they're going to go on the offensive. I, I don't want to play defense anymore. I don't yeah. want to be begging the lawmakers to veto bills. I want to propose bills to safeguard our kids um, because parents should know that their child is being called another name at school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is a medical intervention to change a child's name. Parents should know if the child is going to school and going into a trans closet and changing their clothes at school. Mm -hmm. And that happens in California. Parents should know that schools are giving out trans tape so that girls can you know, tape down their breasts and boys can you know, tape down their uh, genitals um, and girls can ball it up and create a fake genital. Parents should know this, and parents should have the right to stop it. California has just um, funded 10,000 new sc school counselors, 10,000. And that sounds like a, a good thing. Like in my former life, I would have been like, that's great because mental health is such a problem for our kids. But I know that those 10,000 new school counselors are 10,000 new indoctrinators. Mm. They are 10,000 new, new secret keepers. Because once a child goes to a school counselor, parents don't even know. They don't have a right to know that their child is going to a counselor every single day. Yeah. Mm. Why did you decide that you were going to speak out on this issue as a parent? Because for a while... You said, I'll tell my story, but I'll do it anonymously. And then you said, no, nope, I'm going to go public, so public that now you're on the forefront of advocacy. Why? Someone has to do it. And it's two years later. And it's pretty safe out there now to be an advocate and to be in your name. Um, people are told that they're going to lose their jobs, and maybe that does happen. Uh, but there's other jobs to be had. Uh, me personally, if I can't stand up for children, I have no morals. Mm. So I will stand up for children 100 out of 100 times. Um, the movement is growing. And so more and more parents are standing up. And what parents are also finding is that they're not losing their jobs from standing up. So more people stand up. Uh, more people call in now against these bills. And we need, you know, you you need to create a crowd of 
courageous people because they can't cancel us all. Mm-hmm. And we can't ever defeat this unless we have the numbers. So everyone who is against this needs to do something to stop it. And there's plenty of things that they can do anonymously. I mean, we have parents that put on wigs and sunglasses and come in and testify. We have parents who write. We have parents who hold, you know, who who come to the protests, um, and sometimes in their real name and sometimes not. You know, they don't have to get their picture taken, but they need to know that there are the numbers out there. Mm -hmm. And especially they need to know um, the stories in California from the Democrats. Yeah. Because we are are the ones who have to change it in in California. Mm -hmm. It has to be the Democrats. And we're the ones actually getting decimated by this. Um, It's mainly a, you know, a white liberal issue in California, Um, although the Hispanics are getting hit also pretty hard. Yeah. Um, But I think it's it's a different world two years now, and it's safer, and um, nothing's happened to me. I mean, knock on wood. Um, You know, there's a lot of us who are out, and really nothing has happened and i can take a couple tweets that where people call me a bad parent and call me names i'm a big girl yeah doesn't really affect me yeah and what are you all doing at our our duty to to be a support for parents and to bring about real change so we do a lot of things we are um a jack of all trades expert of none <laughs> Um, we do everything and anything. So we are a parent support group. So parents can contact us. Um, then we usually send them out to other groups that are more of the uh, crying on the shoulder groups because we don't we don't do that so much as connect them with other parents mm-hmm. um, and other parent groups. We connect them with therapists and psychiatrists that we have vetted that we think would be helpful for their kids. Um, and then we do a lot of advocacy. So we did a, uh, a protest against the AAP in Anaheim in October. And we joined forces with conservative groups, lesbian groups, you know, all, all different groups, because that's how we're going to defeat this. And um, so we've done that. We also do a lot of helping with the press. So you'll have a reporter who wants to find a parent who lost custody of their kid. We'll connect. Okay. We do a lot of the connecting. We connect um, parents with lawyers mm-hmm. um, across the nation. Um, we write a lot of simple um, fact sheets mm-hmm. too. So you want to be able to distinguish is trans different from gay rights? Well, we have a a sheet on that. You want to know about the suicide stats. We have a sheet on that. It's really important to have those resources. Yeah, yeah and they're simple. They're really yeah. simple. Yeah. For for parents who would say to you, I'm concerned for my child, not maybe because they, they are identifying as trans, but you say that there's some warning signs and they're just sort of wondering, what do I do? How do I protect my child? Maybe even if there aren't any warning signs, they just know for any any kid going to middle school or high school these days, they're going to be exposed to this stuff. How can parents protect their kids? Well, I'm going to just do it California centric because um, we have the worst laws, so it can <laughs> can be used in other states. Uh, so there's a lot of things that that parents have to can do. So first and foremost. Know the curriculum curriculum at your school. Mm-hmm. Read every book that your child is assigned at school before your child reads it. Yeah. Um, know your teachers. Go in that classroom and take a look around that classroom, not just for the welcome posters or you know the the pride flag, but go beyond that and look at all the books on the bookshelf. Mm-hmm. Does anything alarm you? If it does, pull your kid out of that class. Yeah. Don't wait for it to happen. Um, you know, be in that classroom when, you're, when your kids are TK and, and kindergarten, go for those read-alouds and see what those teachers are reading to your student because mm-hmm. those teachers hide it. So they may not have the books on the shelf, 
But, you know, those those circles on the carpet that every kid loves, you know, reading time, be in that classroom and see what that teacher is teaching. Yeah. And note it and report on it. Go to the school board meetings. Um, read to your child the opposite books, the books that show how amazing their human body is. Mm-hmm. Reinforce that. Yeah. Um, reinforce two sexes. Teach your child how to respond with pro- you know when you're asked pronouns. The the polite way to respond, not snarky. Um, but <laughs> you know, tell. There's, there's papers that get sent home in the beginning of school. They ask if your child can take surveys. No, 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 no. Every survey, no. There is an assembly at the school. Go to it. Pull your kid out of it if you don't like the assembly. Yeah. Read every one of your kid's assignments. It's okay to say, I need another assignment for my child. I'm not comfortable with this one. Mm-hmm. See what the teachers do. Yeah. They may or may not capitulate. I mean, we have a kid, I think this is so fantastic, a California high school student was asked um, what his belief was with gender ideology, and he said, I don't believe it. He got an F. Mom was so proud. It's okay. <laughs> yep. It's, it's okay. So, yeah, you have to be on it yeah. with your kids. And that phone, okay, you need to know. The switch, I I should get some money for advertising for the switch. The switch (laughs) has no connection to the internet. So no strangers can get on that device. So you want to give your kid a a device, give them the switch. Um, Pinterest has direct messaging. Like you think it's, you know, it's just an art, like cool. Like, no, this is how they get to your kids. Uh, Just be in the know. It's painful. It's annoying. It's time consuming. But you need to know everything that your child is being exposed to. Yeah. And for for any parents listening who want to find more resources, any advocates who just want to get involved, you can visit ourduty.group to learn more. Uh, But Erin, thank you. We really appreciate your time. We appreciate the work that you're doing. It's just really incredible to see how you are are all in on this, and we need more parents like you out there doing this. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.